this is my second visit to Korean country. And first opportunity was 20 years ago in Sokcho city. Today I'm very glad to be here again as an honorable speaker's position. Thank you very much for having me today. I start from very basic, and um, what is ICHS1? That is a guideline for carcinogenesis studies. Consists of three parts. A, need for carcinogenesis study. B, testing. C, dose selection. Last year we had um, S1BR1, the um, addendum that states one, cases when we can request a waiver of a two-year carcinogenesis study based on ways of weight of evidence assessment. And number two, a new criterion for high dose selection in the last stage to TG mouse. Today I focus on number one. Now that we have S1BR1 guideline, we are strongly uh, recommended to perform weight of evidence analysis for all products that require carcinogenesis study. And we will categorize our product into these category. And carcinogenic potential in human is likely or unlikely or uncertain. And we can request a waiver of two year study in case of likely or unlikely cases. And um, this year, we had an annual meeting of Japanese Society of Toxicology. And we had a symposium of ICHS1 beep where we had attendee from FDA or PMDA, it's a DRA in Japan. And currently, PMDA mandates a pre-consultation meeting to confirm if the application matches to weight of evidence uh, consultation format. And it takes four months from an application to a conclusion. Therefore, um, it is estimated to take six months in total from pre-consultation to final conclusion. And the briefing document should compose of one background information to summary of non-clinical studies, three, summary of clinical studies, four, summary of weight of evidence approach, and five, result, results of each element of weight of evidence approach, their interpretation and considerations, and finally six, conclusion. PMDA will review briefing document which are used in consultation with over CDRAs and it's not mandatory, but it is um, PMDA's effort to learn how the DRA interpret or review weight of evidence assessment. And this is summary of FDA presentation. Uh, currently, FDA completes their review within three to five months. And record of a consultation will be placed in CTD and this is very interesting information. FDA agreed with half of the proposals to accept a carcinogenesis weight of evidence assessment is during January to May. And reason of discordance are lack of adequate explanation on causality or human relevance of his pathological finding or uh, um, of target biology. So again, Adequate explanation is very important to request a waiver. And volume briefing documents vary six to 46 pages, depending on sponsor. But FDA says length does not equal quality. So FDA may think sometimes 46 pages is too much or <laughs> lack of important information, therefore, you know, and we should always aware that adequate explanation is included in weight of evidence document. And if we want special protocol assessment for those level selection and weight of evidence assessment for request of waiver can be submitted at one time. 
And even we FDA concludes two year art study is not necessary. Still other DRA may require two year art study. And in my understanding, FDA has best knowledge, best experience to choose a high dose in two year art study, two year month study. So, and to have special protocol assessment is value for sponsors. Even we submit weight of evidence assessment. We didn't have attendee from EMA. However, recently they published commentary paper. And if you search Google with JAM EMA commentary, then you will find it. It will be very useful uh, commentary paper to see uh, history of SMB R1 revision or how to apply weight, to, weight of evidence approach to EMA. Basically, it's scientific advice, but please take a look at it. This slide was provided by ICH EWG colleague, and these experiences were provided by member company of IQ Drew Safe Consortium. They are According to their experience, oh, I'm sorry, these numbers indicate duration from application to final conclusion. It varies from three to six months. And FDA agreed five cases here, but as I explained in the previous slide, FDA agreed half of cases. So if FDA agreed five cases here, then FDA may have disagreed five more cases to make it 50%. In addition, PMDA disagreed when FDA agreed. Therefore, if we look at it, in total, globally, successful rate could be less than 50, or <laughs> approximately 50. And before we started um, drafting S1BR1 guideline, we had a um, prospective study to confirm if we can product, uh, if we can predict outcome of two-year art study accurately in that prospective study. Sponsors submitted 31 cases of uh, prediction uh, when carcinogenic risk in human is unlikely. However, only 12 cases reached to unanimous agreement. In other words, nine, in 19 cases, at least one DRA or all DRA disagree to sponsor's prediction, unlikely decision. So in such case, successful rate of unanimous agreement was only 39%. So it's really interesting um, in real world setting, in simulation setting, unanimous agreement can be achieved only 50 or less than 50%. Um, from next slide, I show some examples. Um, if we consider two year art study is necessary, we can conduct a uh, two year art study as soon as three months art study is completed we can choose those levels based on three month rat study. In this case, we can conduct six months, in this case, we can conduct six months rat study in parallel with two year rat study. So, and once we complete three month rat study, then some sponsor may go to FDA to discuss high dose level, then we can conduct two year rat study. But when we think two-year art study is not necessary, then we need to go to DRA to come to agreement our weight of evidence assessment <laughs> with six months art study his pathology data. And so it takes, it takes approximately one year or more to complete six months art study and to have final conclusion from all the LA where we explain marketing authorization. However, again, 
currently successful rate of uh, unanimous agreement to our weight of evidence assessment is approximately 50%. So after a um, waiver request, and 50% of a sponsor have to conduct two-year art study. So in this case, start of two-year art study may be delayed at least one year. So we have to consider the reality, possibility of a unanimous agreement with all DLA. And when we request a waiver and do not conduct two-year art study, then we have to consider drug labeling. And if we do not conduct two-year art study based on uh, carcinogenic risk in human, it's unlikely then drug label will state that based on a comprehensive assessment of the available toxicology data and the specific target, compound X is not expected carcinogenic in human. This sounds good. The drug looks safe. But if we do not perform two-year art study based on likely case, then drug label will state that a two-year art study has not been conducted based on the available toxicology data and specific target. Carcinogenic risk in human is expected on organ A, organ B, organ C. We should list up these organs on pessimistic side, safer side. So it will be more than actually uh, targeted organs in a two-year art study. So again, uh, we will evaluate these six um, weight of evidence factors, uh, target biology, secondary pharmacology, test pathology, and evidence of hormonal effect, genotoxicity, and immune modulation. And I will describe these factors, weight of evidence one, two, three, four, five, six, in later slides, so please remember it. This is an um, instances of marketed drugs which can be judged as carcinogenic risk in humans are likely by weight of evidence approach. Please look at drug one and drug two. These are drugs for prostate cancer. And target, target pharmacology is androgen. And if we look at actual data of these two drugs, first, and target pharmacology is androgen, so it's hormonal action, frag, oh, sorry. So uh, weight of evidence one is frag, and not only androgen uh, effect on other hormone like prolactin was detected. Therefore, uh, weight of evidence two is frag. Of course, we saw several change, atopic change, hyperplastic change were observed in hormone sensitive organ or reproductive organs. So uh, factor three is fragged. Also organ weight change or uh, blood hormone levels were detected. Therefore, uh, weight of evidence four is also uh, flagged. In such case, drug one and drug two is judged as a likely case based on weight of evidence factors. So if we do not conduct two-year art study for these two drugs, then drug level may be the same. Tumorogenicity will be uh, expected in hormone-sensitive organs or reproductive organs. However, the actual outcome of two-year art study of drug one is only latex cell tumor. It sounds good. Latex cell tumor is generally considered rodent specific tumor. However, in case of drug two, and in two year art study, not only latex cell tumor, pituitary tumor, thymic tumor, mammary gland tumor, ovary tumor, and urinary bladder tumor. And basically these are uh, hormone sensitive organ, and so it 
doesn't make big difference with or without two-year art study. And urinary bladder tumor was um, based was not based on hormonal action, but um, in case um, it was, it can be expected because um, urinary uh, urinary stone was detected in six months rat study. Anyway, and please look at drug seven, eight, nine. These are immune suppressor and target pharmacology is genus kinase inhibition. And primary pharmacology is immune suppression. So weight of evidence one is flagged. And there was some histopathological change in immune system organs and also organ weight change or uh, reduction of white blood cell were detected Therefore, weight of evidence three and four were flagged. Of course, um, uh, pharmacology was confirmed by pharmacology study or toxicology study. Therefore, in this case, um, factor one, three, six, uh, one, three, four, six were positive. So in such case, um, these drugs are considered carcinogenic risk in humans is likely cases. And in guideline document, when immune suppression effect is clear, rodent carcinogenic study will not add additional information. So value of two year rat study is not as the same as other mode of action drugs. However, if we look at drug eight and drug nine, we see latex cell tumor. This is not basically uh, based on uh, immune effect, possibly hormonal effect. So even in case of immune suppression drug to confirm hormonal effect carcinogenicity or other mode of action carcinogenicity, sometimes two year old study is valid. Um, but please remember, if we look at uh, drug level information of drug seven, it says that um, although relationship is not clear, however, tumors are reported in patients treated with drug seven. So in other words, two year rat study do not perfectly exclude risk in human in case of immune suppression drug. And drug 12, is a little bit tricky case, so I will explain more in detail. The indication of this drug is chronic myelogenous leukemia, and pharmacology is inhibition of BCR, ABL tyrosine kinase that evokes abnormal proliferation in hematopoietic stem cells. So this drug inhibits abnormal proliferation, so and um, first, um, some, some sponsor may expect tumorigenicity is not expected, but if we look at that, information of drug in the same class, it induced uh, tumorigenicity in multiple organs, such as stomach, intestine, adrenals, kidney, perpetual, clitoral gland in two year old study. And when we looked for a study with shorter duration in LAT, we found only two week rat study and only atrophic change and cellular decrease were observed in the lymph node and thymus. So from according to this information, we ex expect multiple tumor genesty However, we didn't see any indicative finding in studies with shorter duration. And if we look at weight of evidence three, and six months rat study of this drug induced uterine dilatation and bile duct hyperplasia in nine months monkey study. And in addition to his pathological change, increased ovarian weight was observed in six months rat study. So in summary, 
findings of carcinogenic concern were information of the drug in the same class, uterine dilatation, bile duct hyperplasia, increased ovarian weight, and drug in the same class induced multi-site carcinogenicity when no finding of carcinogenic concern was detected in two-week rat study. So some DRA may require two-year rat study to demonstrate the potential organs of carcinogenic risk. So drug 12 is um, considered a likely case. However, um, if we cannot specify target organs, um, what the risk is exactly, then some DRA may judge this drug as uncertain case and require two-year rat study. But actual outcome was skin papilloma carcinoma in TG mouse study and negative in two-year rat study. So um, prediction is so difficult. From next slide, I show some cases of marketed drugs which can be judged as carcinogenic risk in humans are unlikely by weight of evidence approach. The first one, drug A, and indication is insomnia. And pharmacology is a selective antagonist for orexin-1 and orexin-2 receptors. If we look at literature information, orexin modulate pituitary LH. That's hormonal signal, so it flagged. And if we look at um, secondary pharmacology screening, parents and metabolites bind to dopamine transporter. Dopamine regulates production level, so possibly related to mammary gland tumor genesis. So this is flagged information. If we look at uh, his pathology of chronic tox study, um, only um, hepatocellular hypertrophy or uh, uh, follicular cell hypertrophy were detected. These are generally considered rodent-specific finding and no histopathological change in nine months dog study. No concern for weight of evidence four, five, six. So finding of carcinogenic concern were potential modulation of LH secretion and of target binding to dopamine transporter. And also, uh, however, carcinogenicity study of drugs in the same class were negative. So in such case, value of consultation for waiver request is quite high. And because um, even though some hormonal effect is suggested in weight of evidence one or two, but no related change was detected in actual toxicology study of this drug, Actual outcome were negative in transgenic mouse and our tumors with low human relevance in two-year old study. Next case is drug B for antiviral drug. This drug is considered as fast in class due to its molecular type, non-nucleic acid analog, and target pharmacology is RNA polymerase of viral origin. And we found uh, information of a drug with the same pharmacology. This drug is different in uh, molecular type. This is nucleic acid type, but target pharmacology was the same and was negative in two-year rat study and two-year mouse study. It's good information. And we saw single cell necrosis in gut associated lymphatic tissue and mesenteric lymph node. It's a frog for immune system. And we saw um, apoptosis and hyperplasia in the small intestine. Hyperplastic change is also flagged signal. However, um, exposure multiple is sufficient. 79 fold in AUC. And we also 
found a slight decrease of lympho lymphocyte or white blood cells, but again, uh, exposure multiple is sufficient and no similar change, related change in dog or human. So in such case, uh, in summary, findings of carcinogen concern were intestinal hyperplasia, single cell necrosis in uh, immune system and decreased white blood cells, but AUC margin was sufficient and no related change were detected in human and dogs. And carcinogenic study of similar drugs were negative. In such case, again, value of consultation for a waiver request is quite high. And actual outcome were negative in transgenic mass or hepatocellular adenoma, basically rodent specific, were uh, detected in two year lab study. Drug C is a um, drug for type two diabetes and pharmacology is DPP4 inhibitor. This is very common mode of action for diabetes drug. And so we found several uh, drugs in the same class. Drug C1 induced hepatocellular adenoma carcinoma in mice. Drug C2, mammary carcinoma and hemangiosarcoma was detected in mice. And drug C3 and C4 were negative in both mice or rats. And drug C5 induced hemangiosarcoma in rats. And tumor genesis was detected in several drugs. However, target organs were not consistent. Therefore, we can consider in such case, this tumor genesis is not uh, related to primary pharmacology, possibly a drug specific situation. And no concern in weight of evidence two but if we look at weight of evidence three, there are some findings in hormone sensitive organs such as adrenals, testes, uh, epididymis, prostate, seminal vesicle. So these are hormonal action flagged. And when we see any change in secondary pharmacology screening, no binding to hormone receptor, but actually we found these changes uh, also exposure multiple are very higher. And some sponsor may consider, oh, we have hormonal action signals. This is a case of uh, waiver request in likely case. However, um, if we look at that six month study, number of findings uh, reduced than three months rat study, only decreased the colloid in seminal vesicle and testicular retention were detected at very higher exposure. And uh, in six months of our study, reduced organ weight in seminal vesicle were detected, but again, exposure multiple was sufficient. And in 12 months monkey study, Necrotizing cutaneous lesion was detected, and this is very famous uh, drug specific, mode of action specific change, but still exposure multiple is 44 to 46 folds. So in summary, findings of carcinogenic concern were weight of evidence three and four, his pathological finding in hormone sensitive genital organs but AUC margin was sufficient and no related change were observed in nine months monkey study and secondary pharmacology screening. Necrotizing cutaneous lesion in um, non-human primate cyanomatous monkey is class specific, but AUC margin was sufficient. And DPP4 is one of T cell surface antigen so uh, that's why some uh, investigative study for immune system were conducted, but no effect was observed in T cell proliferation or mixed lymphocyte reaction. 
and changes in white blood cell were slight. So overall, value of consultation looks positive, but some sponsor may conduct two year rat study based on finding in hormonal organs as soon as three months rat study works uh, is completed. But actual outcome were negative in TG mouse and two year rat study. Drug D is anti-hyperphosphatemia drug. This drug is considered um, first in class because this drug is non-absorbable phosphate binder. It works in intestine. And to normalize phosphate level result in the risk of toxicity or tumor genesis. So, and generally, tumor genesis is not expected with this mode of action. However, if we look at the same pharmacology drugs that are absorbable type, drug D1 induced adenocarcinoma in mice, drug D2 induced urinary bladder tumor, and drug D3 induced glandular stomach adenoma, and uh, drug D4 was negative in mice or rats. But again, although we see some tumor genesis in drugs in the same class, target pharmacologies, were, uh, no, no, target organs were not consistent, like in previous case. So uh, this tumor genesis could be um, not due to primary pharmacology, but secondary pharmacology or structural related topic. And uh, in this drug, secondary pharmacology screening was not performed, possibly due to non-absorbable nature. And no abnormal finding in six month rat study or nine month dog study. However, we had flag on weight of evidence four and in embryo fetal development study, we see some ossification retardation or uncompletion. And in rats or rabbit, in rabbit, in addition, increased post implantation mortality were detected. So, in summary, findings of carcinogenic concern were retarded ossification and mortality of fetus. I think this is possibly due to phosphate binding, but no changes in blood calcium level or parathyroid hormone level. And carcinogenic information of other absorber phosphate binders are less relevant due to inconsistency of target organ or difference between absorbable or non-absorbable. However, even when the drug is not absorbable, it may alter intestinal pH and mineral resorption and eventually induce endocrine perturbation. So in, even though uh, in case of non-absorbable nature, when pharmacology is expected, toxicology may exist. So don't take it easy even in case of uh, even in uh, drug lacks of systemic exposure. Value of consultation for waiver request is still positive even in this drug, but comprehensive consideration is necessary for sponsor to request a waiver as unlikely case. Actual outcomes were negative in TG mouse and two year art study. Um, key message from me today. Um, ICHS1BR1 enables sponsors to request a waiver of two-year art study. At present, the overall successful rate of waiver requests could be approximately 50% or less. So make sure your weight of evidence assessment are scientifically adequate, as FDA told us. Um, when carcinogenic risk is considered likely in your product, the value of waiver is depending on balance of potential outcome and drug labeling description. 
in case of unlikely carcinogenic risk products, the sponsor should aware that and the successful rate of unanimous agreement is potentially lower than likely case. It's difficult to, more difficult to defend than to admit toxicity. So uh, taken together, toxicologists should carefully choose the best path for each product based on finding of carcinogenic concern in each weight of evidence factor. Thank you very much. That's it. These people helped us to prepare this presentation. Thank you again.